Hi, Prince and Princesses. I'm Auntie Kay, and this is our children's Sabbath school program. And guess what? You are welcome to come along with me. Hello, my wonderful and beautiful and handsome Prince and Princesses. Welcome to Lesson 6 of the Auntie Kay Children's Sabbath School Program. Of course, you know that I am so super happy that you are here with me. Now, Lesson 6, we're looking at a home for God. I'm interested in seeing how it is that the story is going to let us know that a home was made for God. I hope that you are too. Now, of course, I said it already. I'm happy that you are here with me. And before I go any further, if you're sitting beside your mom, your dad, your aunt, your grandma, anybody, just give them a hug for me. Yes, do that. Mm -hmm. Just let them know that Angie K is happy that all of you are here with me on this awesome Sabbath. Thank you for doing it. And now let's get into our welcome. Hello and welcome to Auntie Kay's Children's South School Program where Prince and Princesses all around the world get to enjoy and learn about the love of God through sign language, messages with Princess Malloray, character teachers from Nails, Nature Nuggets, Sing Along Time, Mary Versus, Story Hill with Princess Da Vincia, Test Your Knowledge with Quiz Kids, Hashtag Puzzle Fun, Enjoy Object Lessons with Auntie Patty Pat, Bible Questions with Ask Pass Vanessa, Great Crafted Crafts craft, and Good Yummy Goodness with the Girls Tasty Treats. So, no matter where you're living on this great big planet, you are welcome to participate, enjoy, and share. Yes, we live far and wide, but God's love connects us. No matter how you look, where you're from, the color of your skin, or even your culture, welcome! welcome. So now that we've all been welcomed, it's now time for us to hear from Princess Marlore with our message sign of the day. Yes, indeed. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Let's sign together. I worship God when I give my gift to him. Let's close our eyes and clasp our hands. It's prayer time. Happy Sabbath, everyone. My name is Zara Scott, and I am from Brooklyn, New York. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Please help us to put into practice what we learned from Sabbath school, and please help Auntie Kay's program to do well. And you and I pray. Amen. See you next week. Thank you so much, my darling princess, for sharing with us our message sign of the day, which says, I worship God when I bring gifts to him. Thank you so much, princess, for sharing with us. And I want to also thank my royal helper for that prayer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now it's time for us to hear from Niall as he shares with us important tips that helps us to mold and build our character. Niall's Nature Nuggets up next. Hi guys, do you know what this is? It's a lime and this is the tree it comes from. Lime trees can teach us so much. Number one, give. Do you have a lime tree near you? They are amazing givers. Not only do they give shade, but they also bear so much fruit. When a lime tree bears, it really bears. Do you give of your time and efforts to help or provide for others? God gave us a lot to give too, so give. Number two, stay hydrated. Lime trees need a constant and reliable water supply in order to grow healthy. Do you know that we too need the same? We do. God's word waters our souls and without it, like the plant, we can't grow to be healthy. Number three, make room for growth. Lime trees need deep soil so they can spread and develop their roots and grow strong. You and I are just the same. We grow better when we are given the space and opportunity to do so. Look out for these opportunities for growth. Make room for them. Lime trees are truly amazing crafter teachers. 
Thank you so much, Niall, for always sharing with us those great tips as to how we can build our characters. Because if I'm to be honest, I am always in need of helpful tips that will show me how to be a better Christian. So thank you so much, Niall. And do you know there's something else I learned about lime trees? Is that the bigger the leaves, the smaller the limes. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> but thank you so much, Niall, for sharing that with us. And now... It's time for one of my favorite times. It's now time for... It's sing a long time. Morning everyone, happy Sabbath. My name is Mahalia Bellevue and I live in Elmira, New York. Today's first song is going to be I-M-A-C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. Bye and happy Sabbath. I am a C. I am a C. I am a C-H-R-I-S-D-I-A-N And I have C-H-R-I-S-D in my H-E-A-R-T And I will L-I-V-E-E-T-E-R-N-A-L-O-Y I am a C I am a C-H I am a C-H-R-I-S-D-I-A-N And I have C-H-R-I-S-D in my H-E-A-R-T And I will L-I-V-E-E-T-E-R-N-A-L-O-Y Alright, let's speed this up are you ready? Here we go. I am a C. In my H E A R T, and I will L I V E E T E R N A L O I. I am a C. I am a C H. I am a C H I S T I N. And I am C H I S T in my H E A R T, and I will L I V E E T E R N A L O I. I am a C. I am a C H. I am a C H I S T I N. And I am C H I S T in my H E A R T, and I will L I V E E T E R N A L O I. I am a C.
to me are good. God is always working for the good of those who love Him. He helps me do all the things I should. And our third song is God's Dance Floor. Mm -hmm. Sing it out. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to the start where you found me. Thank you to my royal helpers for helping me to introduce our song. And guess what Prince and Princess is? The voice that says it's sing a long time. Her name is Malia and it was her birthday this week. So thank you so much Malia for lending us your voice. But also I pray and hope that you had a great happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Mwah. One more time. Happy birthday to you, Princess. So now after sing a long time, it's now time for us to hear our memory verse. Hello everyone, my name is Julia Sarai Sanders. Our memory verse is taken from Exodus 25 verse 8 and it says, Have them make a sanctuary for me and I will dwell among them. Happy Sabbath! <laughs> Thank you so much, my darling Princess Julia from Jamaica for our memory verse. And you know, I'm always thankful that you are always ready to help Auntie Kay out. Thank you so much, honey. And now another princess, she's over at Story Hill. She's waiting to share with us our story for today, which is the title, A Home for God. Now we're gonna find out how this home for God was made. Let's head on over. <music> Boys and girls, it's story time. A home for God. 
What is the most precious thing that you own? Is it a book, a toy, or perhaps a pet? How would you feel if you had to share that with someone? How would you feel if your pastor asked you to bring it next week to give to God? The Israelites could see God's presence every day. They looked at the cloud that led them during the day and remembered that God was with them. They saw the pillar of fire every night and felt the warmth of God's presence. However, that was not enough. They needed a special place where they could meet God, and God wanted to meet with them. He wanted his special people to know that he was with them all the time and that they could come and worship him. God wanted to have a home in the Israelite camp. God knew exactly what his home should be like. He gave the building plan to Moses. Moses knew exactly what to do. God talked to Moses. Tell everyone that they can have a part in making my house. Whoever wants to can bring an offering to you. No one must feel they have to give. They should give only what they want to give and what they can afford. I don't want anyone to give unless they really want to. What is the most important to me is not what people give, but that they are happy to give it. The people will ask you what they should bring. Tell them special things are needed. Gold, silver, and bronze are important. These metals are to be used when making the furniture. All the wood must be a kind of wood. This wood is strong. It will last well in the heat of the desert, by day and the cold at night. My home will be colorful. People bring wool from their sheep should spin it and dye it blue, purple, and scarlet. You will need cloth and skins to make the walls of the holy place. Have the people bring fine linen, goat skins, ram skins dyed red, and sea cow hides. My home must have lights. Use oil of oil to light them. For some of the services, you will need spices for the anointing oil and sweet smelling incense. I will explain to you how to use these things. You also need onyx stones and other precious stones for the priest's special clothes. Many people gladly brought jewelry and other beautiful things the Egyptians gave them when they left Egypt. A lovely place to worship God was better than keeping the jewelry for themselves. The most valuable things they had were given to God. He would have the best and most beautiful place in camp. The Israelites had seen God's power. They knew his plan and they wanted to be able to praise and worship him in a special way, in a special place. We can praise and worship him in the same way today. God still gives his people opportunities to give to him. He wants us to give with a happy and cheerful heart, just as the Israelites gave. Happy Sabbath! Princess Avintia, there is a song that says, how can I say thanks for the things that you've done? I just want to say Thank you. I wish I could say it in a million other ways. Thank you for always reading our story. I'm going to stick with English. So it's thank you, Princess Davincia, <laughs> for sharing with us our story. Now, what did I learn? I learned that based on our message when it says that I worship God when I bring gifts to him. Do you know that any gift that you have and any talent that you have, that's a gift that you could give back to God? How can I do the venti cake? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, all you have to do is use that talent for God. Like, I love to talk, and so I'm using my voice for him through this program and through preaching and teaching, yes, and I kind of could sing, and so I sometimes do that for God. 
but there are so many talents and anything that we're good at, we can give it back to the service of God. And that's one way that we could worship Him. So today I encourage all of us, whatever we're good at, to say, Lord, how can I use this gift for you? Mm -hmm. So that's what I've learned. And I also wanna encourage all of us to use our gifts and our talents for God, because that's one way we could show Him that we're worshiping Him. Mm -hmm. Now, because I know those listening ears were already turned on, it's now time for Quiz Kids. In the story, the people did not want to build a sanctuary for God. Is this A, true, B, false, or were they undecided? B, false. God gave who the building plans? Was it A, Aaron, B, Japheth, or C, Moses? C, Moses. Gold, silver, and bronze were blank to build God's house. Was it that they were A, important, B, not to be used, or C, they could be used? A, important. According to the story, God's home would be blank. Would it be A, colorful, B, white, or C, black? A, colorful. Hashtag Puzzle Fun is up next. A Home for God Puzzle. Now, directions is use the code to discover the best attitude when giving to God. So we're going to match each letter up with a number. Let's get started. So the number six gives us the letter G. Eight gives us the letter I. Uh, Fifteen gives us the letter V. And four gives us the letter E which is give. Now 16 gives us the letter W, 8 gives us the letter I, 13 gives us the letter T, and 7 gives us the letter H, with. Now number 1 gives us the letter A. <laughs> now 7 gives us the letter H, 1 gives us the letter A, 11 gives us P, and another 11 is P, followed by 17, which is a Y, so happy. 1 gives us the letter A, 10 gives us the letter N, and 3, D, spelling AND. Now, 2 gives us C, 7 gives us H, 4 gives us E, and another 4 gives us E, 12 gives us R, 5 gives us F, 14 gives us U, and D, 9. Cheerful. Followed by, now we're getting close, A, 7 gives us H, 4 gives us E, 1 gives us A, 12 gives us R, and 13 gives us T, which spells heart. Give with a happy and cheerful heart. It's now time for another great mission story. Father of the Fatherless Asma girl believed in God, but she had a big question, can God really do miracles? Perhaps the girl, Pradipa, had a good reason to wonder. She didn't think that she had seen any miracles in her short life in Sri Lanka. Pradipa was born into a Christian home, but her father died when she was nine. Without father, mother had to work hard to raise the girl. Pradipa saw how difficult life was for mother, and she wondered, can God really do miracles? One day, mother told Pradipa that they would worship at a new church. Instead of going to their usual church on Sunday, they would go to a Seventh-day Adventist church on Sabbath. A friend of mother's had invited them. Pradipa liked the new church. She enjoyed learning about God in Sabbath school. She loved listening to stories from the Bible. She heard about Jesus turning a boy's five loaves and two fish into a huge meal to feed more than 5,000 people. She heard about Jesus raising a 12-year-old girl from the dead. She wondered, can God really do miracles? Even though she wasn't certain that God could do miracles, she knew that she loved him. She gave her heart to Jesus and was baptized. Mother also was baptized. As Predipa grew older, she decided that she wanted to become a teacher. But she had a big problem. 
she couldn't pay for college. Although mother worked hard, she didn't have enough money to help. Pratipa wished that she still had a father. She prayed, Dear God, if you really are my father, and if you really want me to go to college, please raise up someone to help me. Nothing happened. Nothing happened the next day, even though Pratipa prayed again. Nothing happened for a year, but Pratipa kept praying. Her prayer, however, changed. She stopped asking God if he really was her father. She realized that God was her father, and she was his child. Dear Heavenly Father, she prayed. You are my father. If you want me to go to college, please raise up someone to help me. Then someone called on the telephone. Hello, said the unfamiliar voice. Do you want to go to college? Pratipa didn't know who was calling, but she knew that she wanted to go. Yes, she said, slowly. But mother and I don't have enough money. Only God, who is my father, can help. Two days later, the caller called again. Get ready to go to college, the voice said. I will help you. At that moment, Pratipa knew that God really can do miracles. Tears flowed down her cheeks as she thanked him. I may not have a father on earth, but I have the most wonderful father in heaven, she prayed. Today, Pratipa is a teacher at a mission school in Thailand. Many children do not come from Christian homes. Many may wonder whether God really can do miracles. Pratipa loves introducing the children to her heavenly father. He loves you, she says. And yes, he really can do miracles. Three years ago, your 13th Sabbath offering helped the school where Pratipa teaches, the Adventist International Mission School in Korat, Thailand, to move to a new campus so even more children can learn about the God who does miracles. And after such a great mission story, it's now time for us to hear and see and learn from Auntie Patty Pat as she always comes with a great object lesson. Auntie Patty Pat is up next. Hi boys and girls, Auntie Patty Pat here and I'm excited to tell you about something that I think you know but maybe you don't fully understand. Have you ever gotten gifts? I like to get gifts and I like to get gifts from my friends because it tells me my friends are thinking about me and they want to make me happy. My daughter just gave me Christmas gifts, both my daughters, want to see what I got? I got a pair of house slippers saying Mama Bear and I also got a candle from the other daughter and it smelled so good and she said she wanted me to remember how her house smells when I'm away from her. Gifts help you to tell others how much you love and appreciate them. Now, do you think God needs anything? Yes, God needs you to come and live with him in heaven. And so the gifts that we can give God that will make him really, really happy is to show him that you're practicing to live with him. So you will be obedient. You will sing songs like the angels do. You will help other people just like the angels do. You will obey the commandments that God has given you. And those are gifts to God. And that's how you worship him. That's how you tell God, God, I love you and I want to make you happy. And I adore and respect you. That's worship. And that's how you worship God. Thank you, Auntie Patty Pat. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You definitely have a talent and a gift of bringing to life just from anything. You can make a scriptural reference and that is a gift that you use for God and I'm so thankful that you use it. So thank you so much, Auntie Patty Pat. And I'm sure all the prince and princesses around the world that they are very thankful that you avail this gift to God also. Thank you so much. And now after Auntie Patty Pat, it's now time to... Ask Pastor Nasa. Hi, Pastor Nasa. My name is Amelia from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This is my question. Do desiccated children go to heaven? 
Hey, thank you so much for that question. It's a really good one. Well, you know, in the book of 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1, the Bible says, My dear little children, I write to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. You see, boys and girls, the reason that the world is in such a bad place and we're in such a big mess is because of sin. And Jesus came to free us from sin. So no, disobedient children will not go to heaven. But the good news is the way that we can counteract that is through giving our lives to Jesus. That's right. When Jesus comes into your heart, he gives you the power so that you can be obedient. And then when it's time to go to heaven and stand before the Father, Jesus will stand there in your place. Isn't that good news? And I'm so glad that anyone can go to heaven as long as they have Jesus. So boys and girls, let's give our lives to Jesus. And you can go to heaven too. Until next time. Pastor Nessa, Pastor Nessa, Pastor Nessa. Thank you also for using your talents and your gift and your knowledge for God in answering our questions every week. And I want to thank my royal helper for submitting such a great question. Thank you to the both of you. Now, Aunt Polly, yes, yes, she's over at Crafty Craft Corner, and she's waiting to share with us our craft for today. I love the way that you brought the story to life and showing that the little things that, not the little things, the great things that persons brought to help to build and make a home for God. Thank you for that great crap. Thank you so much. And now, Princess to Kel, yes, to Kel's mm -mm -mm, tasty treats is right in a few seconds in five, four, three. We're going to head right over to to Kel's tasty treats. The month of February is celebrated as the month of love by people all around the world. This month, we'll be making dishes that help express our love. Today, we'll be making chocolate covered strawberries. Let's get started. Our ingredients for today include strawberries, sprinkles, and melted chocolate. You'll also be needing a lime cookie sheet and straws. Use your metal straw or a knife to put a hole in the top of your strawberries. Insert your paper straws into each hole you need.
Dip your strawberries into your chocolate and then your sprinkles then place on your sheet to dry. Chill for 15 minutes before serving. We have so many gifts that we can share with Jesus and others. Our time, our money, and our talents. While sharing your gifts, don't forget to share your chocolate covered strawberries. You all know I'm gonna sing yummy, yummy, yummy in my tummy, tummy, tummy. Thank you so much, Princess Tikal. Do you know that strawberries is one of my favorite fruits? And growing up, I really loved chocolate. So the combination, mm, that is indeed yummy. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And now my prince and princesses, the program's coming to an end, but I'll be back for next week for a lesson seven. I can't believe we're at lesson seven already. Wow, where does the time go? As they say, time's flying. Yes, indeed it is. But we're having fun whilst it's happening. We're getting to learn about God and our characters being built and we're singing and worshiping God, although the time's flying. So I love spending this time with you. So until next week, remember that God, although he's everywhere, he really wants us to invite him into our hearts. Be good boys and girls. And I love you. Yes, I do. So. Let's close our eyes and clasp our hands. Until next week's Sabbath, be good. Let us pray. Our Father in the heaven, hallowed be my name. Thou kingdom come, thou will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Sabbath everyone and we'll see you all again next week.